Okay, hello everybody, welcome to the class. So I hope you had a very nice day yesterday that you rested a lot. And of course, we're going to continue with the classes tonight. So first thing we will always do is to check the platform. This is the platform, this is the class of tonight. And uh, it is the question for tonight. And uh, remember to do the exercise 2.11. So it's just a matter for you to, to take. As I understand, number four here is not correct. So I reported that already. And uh, then there are other five questions. So it's five and five, okay? It's also very important to remember that we need to finish the unit one and the unit two, the section one and two, and also the midterm test by Monday. So Monday before the class, we should be done with uh, the whole thing on unit one, unit two, and also the midterm test. So please remember if you haven't done uh, some of the exercises to go into the platform and do that one, okay? So we're gonna check the attendance, of course. Let's see how it goes. Ana Claudia González Velázquez. Present teacher. Good. Andres Giovanni Valdivieso Portillo. Present. Good. David Samuel Galdames Monterrosa. Present teacher. Good. Dora Elizabeth Flores Mendez. Present. Good. Fernando Ernesto Cosme Morales. Present. Good. Fernando Marvin González Martínez. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejía. Present teacher. Good. Heidi Eugenia Salguero de Rivas. Ileana Present Giselle. Teacher. Thank Sorry. you. Okay. Ileana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Jarvin Isaac Guevara Miranda. José Marcos Rodríguez Ayala. Jose Osmin Rivas Navas. Jose Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Juan Miguel Bran Mejía. Present teacher. Good. Ramón Enrique Mata Escobar. Roberto Luis Umaña Orellana. Roxana Ibet Asensio de Mejía. Present. Good. William Alexander Ramírez Flores. Present. Good. Jessica Janari Cortez Díaz. Here. Good. Zuleima Ivonne Moreno de Hernández. Present. Good. And Irwin Lagos Andrade. Present teacher. Very good, perfect. So we are going to start the class of tonight. So first question, uh, how important do you believe that is to have an interactive presentation? To be honest with you, uh, for me it's important because uh, when you are presenting th something, you can get more, um, maybe more um, interest of the audience. And the other hand, maybe uh, you can uh, create a um, comfortable environment to develop your presentation. Okay. So it's, it's more for for both. It's uh, maybe uh, you try you you transmit um, maybe credibility or I don't know. Or maybe you. The thing is that when you are presenting something, you need to create a good environment, and the other hand, the audience. Will be more uh, comfortable and they could participate more, maybe. 
Very good. So yes, you need to make everybody to participate and you are going to have their attention if you make interesting, interactive their presentation. Good. Any other comments or opinion? I, I agree with Roxana comments because I've been this year in two presentations, two meetings uh, with some important information about our products with one of the CEOs. And it was embarrassing that nobody was participating, just mm -hmm. the same two or three uh, people. Uh, it was embarrassing. I, I felt in that way, even though I was one of the, the one that was participating. And it was so frustrated for the one, for the speaker because the meeting was supposed to last one hour and it just lasts 40 minutes because they cut off the meeting because they didn't feel that there was uh, like a feedback interaction. And I don't know if it was my uh, teammates were like kind of afraid because he is one of the highest CEO and that day I saw the importance for us to be confident and to apply what we learn when we're practicing and studying English. Um, it, it was so frustrating. There were two meetings in the same row. It was embarrassing. It's so important to have feedback. They were presenting very important information, but it was interesting. Very good, perfect. Thank you, Ana Claudia. And actually, that is true. I mean, the other way is like when there is no interaction, there is no participation. Uh, yeah, the meetings, they don't move the way they should be mm -hmm. moving, right? And mm -hmm. definitely affects everything, not only, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, the people that is sitting there, but also the person that is presenting. You so. know, since the last meeting in that way that, that nobody was participating, so nobody was talking so I mean, we were just two or three people talking. Uh, that man no longer has the meeting with us during this year. I guess he will be having a meeting with us until next year. So yeah. affected, in a, it was a big impact. I felt. Yeah, definitely. definitely it's a big impact and also it's very good what you said that you need to practice i mean here in the class sometimes we have the chance right we have the chance to participate not mm -hmm. only to practice english but also your skills mm -hmm. on the way that you are going to participate in a meeting to provide mm -hmm. your opinion everybody's opinion is important i mean uh, there mm -hmm. are not uh, right or wrong talking about opinions so um, here we practice not only about English, but also about those kind of skills. So mm -hmm. it's very, exactly. Very good. Perfect. Any other comments or opinion? Uh, I think, teacher, you can uh, get instant feedback. You can, uh, uh, even though the, the people don't speak, you can see the face, you can see the, the impression that you are uh, giving to, to the, the audience. And you can uh, uh, get uh, or you can correct the 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 way you are talking or or, the, or adjust the topic to uh, get the, the effect that you are looking for. You you need to to see. It is important if you are in a in a physical way. If you are in a in a electronic way. In a, audio video conference uh, it is important too you can uh, feel you can uh, adduce and you get instant feedback uh, uh, people pe is, uh, speak not only with the the mouse with words you speak uh, with it uh, with the gesture with uh, his movements uh, with his body it is important when you you take time to interact with the people it is important you can get instant feedback and I use the, the, the root of your intervention, I think. Very good, perfect. Thank you for the comment. That is so true. I mean, everything is important. We checked already about the presentation itself. I mean, the slides that you're going to create, the way that you're going to speak. Um, even intonation, we said before, right? So the most important part, like the introduction and the closing, 
uh, to emphasize some things. So many things are important. And that's the good thing as we were discussing that here we just not uh, practice English, but also we practice different skills. So everybody is able. So for example, this incoming Monday, we are going to have everybody to present something, right? So it's going to be a good opportunity for not only to practice English, but also to practice your skills as presenter and check how you can engage people and things like that one. So it's a very good thing. Good, so we're gonna check a video right now. Let's see how it goes. As usual, uh, you are going to provide any feedback on this one uh, or comments or opinions. Here we go. In this video, we're going to look at how you can engage your audience in your presentation. The first step, of course, is to create your content, to know what you want to share. And then the second step is to figure out how to maximize the engagement and interaction between you and your listeners. And we're going to look at six strategies to help move you in that direction. Hello there and welcome back. If this is your first time tuning in to Communication Coach, this channel is here to help people probably like you, rising leaders who want to increase your impact so you can lead the people around you to higher levels of excellence. We're doing a two-part series in how to engage your audience. In this video, we're gonna look at six quick tips. And in the next video, we're going to look at learning styles. So make sure that you look for that video. Either I'll link it to a card above and I'll also put it in the description below. So in this video, I want you to look at these six strategies for engaging your audience. Think about which one would be the easiest one for you to use in your very next presentation. So tip number one, ask more questions. Instead of just talking at your audience, you want to create a feeling of a discussion. So you can ask what they call rhetorical questions that you don't need anybody to answer. You just ask the question and they think about it during your pause. Or you can actually ask them to respond. But make sure you ask them a nice easy question, something light. All they have to do is maybe raise their hands or shout out a one or two word response. Nothing too complicated. You want to keep it nice and easy. Another thing that you can do is ask your listeners to do something physical. This is tip number two. Ask them to do something like, hey, I'd like you to take an object out of your pockets, or I would like you to open and flip through a book that you might be looking at. I once saw a speaker, for example, ask everybody to cross their arms. And then once we all had our arms crossed, they talked about comfort and comfort zone a little bit. And then they said, okay, now cross your arms in the opposite direction. And it really helped the speaker make the point because there was a bit of discomfort when you start, and you can try it right now, when you switch your arms the opposite way that you're used to folding them, it is a little bit uncomfortable. So it really drove home the speaker's point, but by having us do something physical, it made it that much more powerful. The third tip is to give your listeners something to react to. So it's not just you as a speaker and your listeners. Maybe you put up a relevant quotation or image on a slide and then you ask them to react to it in some way, like by asking them a question or in some other way. That is much more dynamic than just you and your listeners. Now it's a third part of the puzzle that they're reacting to, stimulus response. That'll usually get people thinking and get people talking. The fourth way to get people more engaged is to ask a volunteer from your audience to come up on the platform or the stage up to the front and do something with you, demonstrate something with you. And what happens when you bring a volunteer up is the li other listeners put themselves in the volunteer's place. And so they're much more likely to relate to it and they find it much more engaging and entertaining. For example, I teach college and at the beginning of every semester, almost every course, I teach students how to shake hands professionally. And I bring up a volunteer and they're laughing, they're engaging because they can see themselves in the volunteer's spot and they all get better handshakes and they do a better job. And then we have them practice it more as a group as well. You can ask them again to do something physically later, but just bringing the volunteer up is another technique that you can use to get people more engaged. The fifth tip is to use a real object, some kind of prop, instead of just simply the PowerPoint slides. So for example, if I'm talking about camera lenses, I wanna have a real object, a real prop. Real camera lens is way more engaging than a picture, for example, of a camera lens up on the PowerPoint. And if you've ever flown on a plane, you know this. When the flight attendant is demonstrating how to buckle the seat belts, they use the actual object, which is much more interesting to look at 
than let's say that little pamphlet they put about the seat belts in the seat pocket in front of you. I don't look at that pamphlet, but I do look at the person with the object. And I always find it a little interesting how they handle that seat belt because it's a real object, much more realistic and interesting than a simple image. And the last tip, the sixth tip, is that you can be the prop. Your physical body can be a way to engage your listeners. So the way you gesture, the way you come alive, the way you move around your speaking area. You might even go a little bit into your audience, like up an aisle for a little bit. That's way more engaging than just standing still in one place the whole time. Now you have to be careful. You don't want to move for no reason. You don't want to pace like you're nervous. You have to move with a purpose. But when you move with a purpose, it's much more likely to bring people into the interaction, get them much more excited. So those are my six quick tips on how to engage your audiences more effectively in a presentation. Just wanted to remind you there is another video right after this in the card above here or in a link in the description below about how to use learning styles as a schema for interacting with your audience in a more dynamic way. So thanks, God bless, and I will see you in the next video. Perfect. What did you get from this one? There are many ways to interact uh, with people. Uh, the man was talking about, uh, for example, to, to call uh, anybody of the audience who in front of the, the public. So in, this could be for uh, many reasons. For example, to show um, how to do something, uh, to show how not to do something uh, in other times, uh, to, um, uh, and this is obviously for, uh, for uh, bringing the attention uh, from the public to the stage okay so um, the 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 people is more uh, is paying more attention uh, for the situation because uh, in so sometimes you don't want to be this this person because maybe you are a shame of uh, or, or for example you are terrified to uh, to be in front of people, yeah. Another thing uh, that the man said it was about the, um, if you will uh, present some hardware, for example, uh, bring bring this hardware to the to a presentation, and maybe uh, pass the hardware uh, from one to another in the public, in order to they um, interact with this subject maybe or with this thing and uh, uh, be the, the uh, how to be, how, how to say this, be the most uh, close, uh, the explanation of, of how is this thing, uh, is, uh, uh -huh, how this thing is uh, uh, in, in, a, in a real environment, yeah? Um, yeah, I, I think uh, those uh, those situations uh, could be better in a presentation. Very good, perfect, definitely. So if you interact with people, if you uh, feel closer to them and you uh, are linked with them, definitely it's going to be much better the presentation because communication is going to improve and then you will be able to, for example, ask questions or check if they have some doubts, right? So good. Any other comments or opinion? I, I think teacher that it's easier to break the ice when you ask to the people to do something, something easy for, for them. For example, raise your hand, uh, something like that. Uh, uh, they, they try to, to put attention to uh, attend to the next indication uh, is important. And uh, uh, if they do something easy, then they can do 
something more difficult. How uh, like to speak? Uh, is it right? Is it right? It is important, and the people get involved in the in the topic. Of what are you talking to? Is it important? And uh, they are uh, they feel part of the what is happening in this stage. It's, it's so important, and uh, we need to to take this in consideration. It's important uh, how you have a problem with the time. Uh, raise your hand. The people get, get interested. What is happening is important for me. <laughs> I think that is a, a very, a very good uh, advice. Very good. You are so very right. I mean, if they are asking questions, if they are uh, providing opinion is because they are interested in that one, in the topic, right? They um, they want to know more. They want to participate and be part of. So you are one with the audience, and that is that is actually the best that can happen in any kind of presentation, right? So you feel that you succeeded, that maybe the message was can be in a very good way, and everybody understood what is needed to be done. Very nice. Any other comments or opinion on the tips? No more. Okay. So let's check uh, this one that it says 18 ways to make your presentation more interactive. And let's see how it goes. And the first part is going to be, let me see. Yeah, just the introduction. Uh, for David, could you please help me reading this? Okay, Jim. It can be difficult to hold your audience attention for the entire presentation. According to a press study, Half of the respondents said they did something other than listen during a co-worker's presentation, including sending text messages, checking emails, falling asleep. An interactive presentation is much more likely to keep your audience attention and build rapport with them. And there are a few simple ways to achieve this, from leave falling to ask questions throughout this article explores several different effective strategies for making the audience feel fully involved in the presentations and keeping your audience eye away from their smartphone. I, I, you need to pick the smartphone, not the entrance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, there are people that they actually do that one. Right? So they say, no cell phone, you're going to put it yes. in this box and that's it. <laughs> Yeah, because I think in this time, for, for us, that uh, we are not a, a native a, a, a digital, but for us, it's difficult to let the, the phone away. And I don't imagine for a, a, a guy from 20 years. And I, I see there is a, a symbiosis. I don't know how to say symbiosis. But I, I see it's, it's something integrated to, to, to her body, to, to the, the body. I think that it's important. But but if you look, if you if you can do that, you are a, an amazing speaker. <laughs> you can do that. It, it's something very important. Yes. Perfect. Definitely right. So yeah, this is something that is uh, nowadays, as you say, is, is very common. I mean, it's a distractor, even sometimes, even if the presentation is, is interesting. I mean, some people there are thinking, oh, I have to type my brother because I have to do something right. So it's a, a natural distractor nowadays for because of many, so, many reasons. Some word of the speaker remember, oh, I need to do that. <laughs> when you hear some, some word, ah. <laughs> Yeah, that is it. So sometimes it's like, oh my goodness, I have to do this other thing and I have to send the message to, I don't know, somebody, right? So, so now, uh, yeah, checking emails, falling asleep. <laughs> well, that's uh, that happens sometimes, mostly when the when the meeting or the presentation is too long or they turn off the lights, right? Sometimes that happens. So depending on what you are presenting, if they are not engaged, Definitely, you are going to lose them. And uh, this is something very interesting that we have here. What is, my friends, to build a report?
communication in both ways with the listener. Not only you talking is uh, create a relation. Very good. So that is it. Is to to link right to link, um, to be connected. I mean, is I mean, if you are there in front speaking and speaking and they're not paying attention, you are alone, right? You mm -hmm. are not with with the people. But if they are talking with you and you as a presenter, you yeah. provoke that one. Of course, that is the best that can happen. Mm -hmm. And uh, yes, everything is involved in this one as body language, right? Um, uh, I was checking that on the call centers industry. They say mm -hmm. something that is very important. I mean, even when you are on the phone, you need to smile, you need to move your arms mm -hmm. because even when the other person on the other side, they are not watching at you, they can feel the way that you are mm -hmm. moving. Right? They can, you can sense, you have the feeling of that one. So that is, is very true. Good. So let's move on. The next one says, why involve your audience? Uh, okay, it's not that long. So it's going to be for Ana Claudia. Okay. Why involve your audience? Listening to a presentation for any length of time can be a difficult process. If you don't involve the audience, they'll start to play with their phone, talk to colleagues, and generally lose track of what you're saying. Once this happens and you start seeing that the audience would rather be somewhere else, you'll start feeling anxious and might try to speed up the presentation. Uh, to engage a large audience fully, the presentation needs to be ener energetic, purposeful and staged as if it's a direct conversation between both you and your audience. That way they'll absorb your ideas and insights and they'll have learned something in an enjoyable way. Perfect, what do you get from this one? It's true. Uh, and also the example that you were uh, saying about the consent, that's right. We are uh, pushed to uh, smile, to move. Also, if you feel comfortable to be stand up, it's better if you don't want to be sit, if you, feel free or you're free to move uh, once you are talking with the other person over the phone, that's right. And in nowadays that the pandemic launched us to make all these uh, online situations, it's very important to have a uh, feedback and the energetic tone of voice, I think is very important because it's different to listen to someone that is talking flat than someone that is emphasizing words or playing with the sound of the words. Very different. And that, uh, that is enjoyable to our ears. So that is so true. I, I mean, larger uh audiences of course is going to be more difficult than shorter mm -hmm. uh, because with shorter audiences you can have eye contact you can point know their names uh, get involved with them with larger of course is going to be kind of different I was... but, but the, exactly but the example says it doesn't matter the the length of the presentation and it's coming to my mind when we we'll watch all these videos uh, for TED, TED. Yeah, they are so impacting a few minutes, and not only for the one being there present, also for us that we watch the videos. All of those guys, uh, girls, they have like a I don't know, like a standard of how to speak because all I've seen, it doesn't matter who is the speaker, they are very, very interesting. That is true. Yeah, but it's because they have an organized way. And have you seen on those videos that they have like a clock, like a timing, right? Mm -hmm. In front so, of them, on the exactly. side. So imagine how well they can manage the way they present mm -hmm. that they know that they have, I don't know, 10 minutes. And mm -hmm. they, they need to transmit the whole idea in that time, right? Mm -hmm. Provide examples, show pictures, anything that they want to do. Mm -hmm. But that is something very very professional that is a very good most of them exactly i remember when uh, the the previous video right now he was saying to ask the audience to do something physical 
I remember that all these type of videos, they, they make you to do something physical. Mm -hmm. That is true. So yeah, sometimes there are little details that are going to make the difference, right? And the way that you are going to connect. And mm -hmm. as we also learned before at the beginning, that is very important. The presentation mm -hmm. of the topic and the introduction, you need to engage them at that mm -hmm. time. So that is Absolutely. very, very good. Perfect. So number one says plan from the audience perspective. This is going to be for, uh, let's okay. see. Okay, go ahead, please. Okay, plan from the audience perspective. Before you start writing your presentation, think about these points. What are the most interesting parts in my topic? How much will be the audience know about my topic? What level do I target it at? Uh, which members of the audience will most likely be dis disinterested? Yeah. How can I help them learn and understand my topic? And what is the size of the audience? You can do this by researching the, the event or conference, event or event. Event. Event or conference, investigating other speakers at the event and even contacting the organizers to find out more about the demographic. By asking these questions about your audience and the unidentified answers, you are starting to think about your audience interests and needs. Remember, the aim is to give the impression that your presentation has been planned according to your audience specific interests. Good, what do you get on this one? Uh, that it's entirely uh, all right because uh, even, uh, um, how to say this, even you are the most prepared uh, speaker, you have to know, no, you must know uh, which is your uh, audience or what kind of audience do, will you have in your, um, yeah, in your presentation or the day that you will deliver the content from uh, to the audience in order to, uh, to establish or to set like a level of understanding and a level of, um, um, let's see, we could see a level of uh, speaking maybe, because if uh, the, the, the people are not, um, or maybe if people not have the, the expertise about the topic and you are uh, talking very in a very technical way uh, people could be disoriented maybe or and uh, obviously this could be um or, or this could uh, make a uh, um miss um misunderstood yeah, misunderstood maybe, or uh, um, maybe they cannot pay attention to you at the at the presentation, and uh, like we uh, like we were talking before, where uh, David was talking, these percentages could be could be uh, higher than the than the shown at the reading, so. Uh, you have to to set a point or set a yeah a target maybe uh, or a level that you um, have to establish in order to all people in the audience uh, listen to you and pay attention and interact with you if you consider this a uh, 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 a needed situation in your in your presentation, yeah. Um, okay, mm -hmm. go ahead. There, there are uh, some sometimes that uh, the content is I don't know if this word is right. Preceded, preceded, come on. Ah, preceded, but you have to uh, um 
try to more make more uh, interesting. Yeah, not maybe not the points of your or or the bullets or the text. Yeah, but um, but um, the main point is how how could you um, manage the situation in order to don't get bored the, the public or the audience yeah okay. okay very good perfect thank you so i mean yes if they are bored definitely is because they are not paying attention they are not interested in what you're saying even if, when the topic is relevant or something is going on i mean um, that is like the opposite, right? So whenever you see somebody like that, yeah, it's because, uh, or, or the whole audience, I mean, it's something is going on. And as David was saying, on the go, sometimes you need to, to change, you need to correct yourself, right? And uh, uh, it's very interesting what it says also, that uh, also you need to think about the audience. I mean, maybe you are going to present the same topic, but it's not the same uh, that if, if your audience is like, for example, teenagers, or um, parents or single mothers. I mean, even if it's the same topic, I mean, you need to change certain things, certain, uh, you need to, to uh, enhance some, in some way, let's say. And it's very interesting also that, of course, whenever you are planning your presentation, there are questions that you, you have to ask yourself. I mean, from the point of view of the audience, I mean, what, are the most interesting parts of my topic. How much will the audience know about my topic? That is a very good one. What level do I target it at? Which members of the audience will most likely be disinterested? Because sometimes we have different kinds of people, right? How can I help them learn and understand my topic? Which is one of the most important questions. What is the size of the audience that, yeah, is going to be for you to know the strategy that you are going to use? So it's, it's a very good one, this one, actually, and very, very important. Okay, number two says, use an easy to follow structure. So uh, let's see, Fernando Ernesto Cosme. Okay, uh, use an easy to follow structure. When building your presentation, focus, focus on giving it uh, a structure which people can easily follow. They start by introducing the, the core concept and goals, then elaborate on the various points in a bit more detail. Draw logical conclusions and leave your audience with a clear takeaway take message. You want to flow naturally from one part to the, to the next slide, you are telling a big story chapter by chapter. Chapter by chapter. Uh, what did you chapter get? Chapter by chapter. Uh, uh, we we have to, to take an account when when you are uh, like we are uh, was talking about the how to do a presentation. It's very important in this case because uh, the, the way that is the, the presentation are is a structure is the is the way when you are building the, the, that that presentation. Uh, you have to, to you have to maybe do, do your agenda, do your concepts, and you have to to take a, a big domain of the topic that you are doing, you are talking about. And if, for example, when you are in a presentation, uh, you, always the introduction is first, then the objective, maybe the agenda, the, the agenda and the, the main topic. Uh, the main topic, maybe you, you can focus on uh, the more important things in the presentation. Uh, it is very, very important to, to join with maybe some images or, or some uh, little description. You, you don't have to, to put a lot of text in that. And at the end, uh, you have to, to give uh, a conclusion that all the audience maybe have doubts. And with the conclusion, you resolve that doubts sometimes. That's it. Okay, very good, very interesting. Definitely so. 
the structure has to be easy to follow, right? And uh, whenever you are planning this, uh, of course, uh, it's linked to the first one. I mean, depending on the audience, depending on the topic, depending on the time that you have for you to deliver the presentation, then uh, of course you are going to use different structure, different strategies. But at the end, as uh, Fernando was saying, I mean, it has to have like, the objectives like the introduction and then the the core of the presentation the conclusion some questions if you have doubts i mean it has to be very interactive so and uh, if the structure is easy to follow and uh, the strategies for you to keep everybody engaged are good at the end everything is going to be nice good next one number three says get the audience immediately involved so this one is going to be for a Giselle. Not possible, okay. Uh, Jessica Janari. Not possible either, okay. Uh, Dora Elizabeth. Three, get the audience immediately involved. Your audience will come to your presentation in a range of different moods. Try using a simple icebreaker to read energies. Then and get the energies. Then and get the then focus in your presentation. For example, ask people to stand up. I introduce them themselves to their neighbors or have them identify two or three questions they would like to hear. Address it during your presentation by starting with an icebreaker. You show your audience that your talk will that's you that's your talk will be interactive and require their, pre their presentation. Okay, what do you get in this one? Uh, I think this uh, when uh, is a uh, uh, keep, uh, uh, keep the motivation for uh, hear the presentation and participate uh, the, the listener, uh, make the, the listeners participate in, in, the, in the presentation. This, this form, uh, the listener uh, keep the, uh, uh, keep the attention for, for the topic. Okay, very good. So yes, uh, definitely you need to get uh, everybody involved. So there are good strategies. For example, everybody stand up and introduce yourself. I mean, that mm -hmm. is something that is going to work or tell about your hobbies or what is your favorite movie or uh, whenever you are speaking already about the topic, I mean, how this impacts your mm -hmm. life or anything like that one, right? And ask mm -hmm. questions, sometimes questions to the public, sometimes uh, you point at people and ask, what do you think about these things? So that is something that is uh, is, is going to work. I mean, if you get the audience involved, definitely they're going to uh, pay attention and it's going to be easier, right? Good. Number four, it says, ask the audience questions during your presentation. Heidi. Uh, sure, teacher. Um, let me. Of course. Ask the audience questions during their presentations. The audience attention dropped to zero after just 10 to 15 minutes of your presentation. To get their attention back, take a break from your presentation from time to time and interact with your audience. Ask for their questions and answer them during your presentation. This will help clear up any confusion the audience might have. When planning your presentation, identify opportunities in your material for your audience to ask questions. 
If you're not comfortable breaking the flow of your presentation, mention that you will be taking questions at the end and so the audience can prepare some questions. Asking rhetorical questions as you move through your presentation involves your audience by stimulating their own thought process. This technique also helps move between sections of your presentation and establishes a clear transition from one point to another. If you're comfortable with talking questions throughout your presentation, use a tool such, such as Slide Do, which allows your audience to talk, to ask questions anonymously at any time. So even shy people can participate in the discussion. Good, what did you get in the test? And for me, it's a very good technique, teacher, to, to let the audience ask during the presentation. In the moment you are talking about uh, about their they they what they need to know more about, it's, it's much better than leave it to the end. And there's another good idea here that says, uh, uh, "What does it mean, slide the do? What does it mean?" Oh, I'm sorry. Which one? Slide slide do. Slide do. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, that is like a tool when, I mean, if you are presenting, you will be able to send them the link and then they will be able to, to send questions anonymously. You don't know who is asking anything. So, uh -huh. uh, but so since we are talking about virtual speeches, I think another, another tool can be that they can write the questions, right? Yeah. Like a message. Okay. Yeah. So there are many uh -huh. techniques as you can say. Huh? Uh -huh. Exactly. And that's what I get. And and I don't know if it's the right time, but uh, can I make you a question about our presentation for, for Monday, teacher? Definitely. It's going to last only five minutes, right? Well, if five, seven minutes, 10 maximum will be probably the best. I mean, not that much because of the time that we don't have for, for everybody. Mm -hmm. I mean, if we had the time, I will give you half an hour, but 10 minutes long, it will be, it will be good enough from five to mm -hmm. 10, let's say. Okay, okay. Thank you, teacher. Perfect, so you are very right. So there are many ways for you to, to do this. In my opinion, my, the best for me, the, the, the one that works is that every time that we finish uh, an, an important part, I ask questions. Do you have questions? What do you think mm -hmm. about this? Or what is your opinion? So, because then throughout the presentation, everybody's going to be there speaking. Of course, sometimes it may be that they have too many questions, right? So sometimes the time goes fly and you, I mean, you have to accomplish the time, right? So- Yeah, uh, and, and uh, as long as you get a little expertise uh, yourself, you feel it when, when, when your audience is getting, is getting bored, you, you can feel it and, and you can react with some questions, right? So that is it. So it's a very good technique if you see somebody that is kind of boring. What do you think about this? Uh, what is your opinion? What would you do in this situation? Mm -hmm. Something like that one, right? So it's a very good practice that is going to bring back uh, to the attention anybody. And also you will be able to, uh, to solve any questions that they might have. So it's a very good thing. It's one of the most powerful actually, okay? So uh, we are not gonna check that one. Number five, use storytelling to make it more memorable. Okay, that is a good one. Suleyma Yvonne. Not possible. Uh, let's see, William Ramirez. Not possible, okay. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa. Not possible. Jarvin Isaac. Everybody's at the supermarket. Fernando Gonzalez. Yes, teacher. Okay, perfect. Are you able to read? <laughs> uh, yeah, give me a sec. Uh, of course. Just okay. move to uh, place with silence. <laughs> of course, of course. A silent place, I don't know. Good, good, take your time. 
Okay. Um, use storytelling to make it more memorable. Since our early ancestors, story have always been a huge part of human culture and civilization. Storytelling is the most universal way to captivate your audience attention, no matter where they are from or where or what they do for, for a living. Stories are much more engaging and memorable than lists of fat and figures, but you wouldn't think so looking at the majority of presentation, particularly academic ones. People automatically tune in when you start telling your story because they want to know what happened next. A, po a popular storytelling technique is when you present the status quo and then reveal an improved path to that end goal. Think of your presentation as one arching narrative. As we mentioned earlier, give, give it the proper structure with a clear beginning, middle and end. Introduce conflict and provide a powerful resolution that reinforce your key message. Very good. What do you get on this? Messages, that's right. Yeah, messages. Uh, uh, like like uh, people say, uh, a picture is more value than a war, or say more than a war. I don't know how is the, the correct, but the, this is the idea. Because it's more because it's more more memorable or or it's make uh it's make more impressive impressive your presentation uh, for example i i noticed in the most of the the most of the speech of success people uh, they they told the a, a story of of their life and be, because in the in the paragraph i say not only not only image uh, a popular storytelling technique is is when you present the star school and then really in pro path to that end goal and use a narrative because you're uh, catch the attention of, of of your audience when you when you when you tell them um, a a story a story of their life and when you use uh, some jokes in the story, but the the goal is um, present. I don't know. Uh, a story of success and you can use this this technique of storytelling using narrative and also you can use um, image because the story, storytelling i think that is is make um make some graphics right so, so. yes uh -huh. go ahead no, that's it. Okay, perfect. Thank you. So definitely, I mean, this is one of the most powerful techniques. Um, of course, you need to tell a storytelling that is relevant for the topic that we're discussing, right? So that is the first thing. Uh, but I mean, I believe that everybody, when you go to a very good presentation, sometimes you come, come out and you say, oh, I really, it really shocked me when he said that story when he was very sick and something happened, right? So at the end, it's shocking the, the conclusion of the story or the situation that the person was living. So that, that happens a lot. Uh, we sometimes remember better this kind of, of things that happen whenever you go to a class, to go to a training, to anything like that. So yes, the message was received, but through another, uh, let's say channel, that is the story. So now you get it, now you fit it, right? So you will be able to understand better everything. And then also you will be able to engage people because when anybody starts to tell a story, I mean, they uh, 
they get like, oh, what is going to happen, right? What is this about? So it's a very good technique. It's a very good, good one. And we can practice that one. I mean, um, if we have time, what I do sometimes is I collect kind of stories, you know, and then uh, whenever I have the chance, I try to use it. So that is a very good thing. Uh, okay, we're going to do a little pause uh, for number six because it's time for us to check the attendance. Okay, let's see. Ana Claudia Gonzalez Velasquez. Present teacher. Good. Andres Giovanni Valdivieso Portillo. Present. Good. David Samuel Galdames Monterrosa. Present teacher. Good. Dora Elizabeth Flores Mendez. Present. Good. Fernando Ernesto Cosme Morales. Present. Good. Fernando Marvin González Martínez. Present. Good. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejía. Heidi Eugenia Salguero de Rivas. Present teacher. Good. Ileana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Jarvin Isaac Guevara Miranda. Jose Marcos Rodriguez. Ayer. Present teacher. Ah, okay. Jose. Good, good. Jose Osmin Rivas Navas. Jose Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Juan Miguel Bran Mejía. Present teacher. Good. Ramón Enrique Mata Escobar. Roberto Luis Umaña Orellana. Roxana Yvette Asensio de Mejía. Present. Good. William Alexander Ramirez Flores. Present. Good. Jessica Janari Cortez Diaz. I'm here. Zuleima Yvonne Moreno de Hernández. Erwin Lagos Andrade. Present teacher. Perfect, thank you. So let's move on, my friends, with these techniques. So here we go. So it's number six is going to be use non-linear presentation software. So this one is going to be, let's Let's check, hold on a second, for Erwin Lagos. Okay, teacher, we use non-linear presentation software. Instead of flipping through slide after slide, you can show the relationship between your ideas and give your audience the big picture view for your topic. Try learning, your audience drive the presentation by laying out all the main points and then let them, them choose, choose which topic they want to go to. Your audience will get a truly custom presentation based in their interests, which they will appreciate and more easily remember. Good. What do you get on this one? Oops, uh, I think that, for example, one picture can sell than your idea. Can sell, can sell, sell, uh, vender, sell. Okay. Sell. Yeah, can sell your idea. For example, uh, with one, one picture, it's like saying that 1,000 words. Okay. So yeah. very good, yeah, yeah. That's it. Okay, very nice. So uh, yes, this technique, well, maybe it's not good for um, all the all the topics, but it's a good technique. I mean, if it's possible for you to use it, I mean, you can choose or you can present. Okay, we're gonna discuss about this one, these topics, which one would you like to go first? And then you choose the second one. At the end, of course, you are going to cover everything. Uh, sometimes it's possible, sometimes it's not possible, depending on the topic, because sometimes we need to go, I mean, through, for example, if it's a problem, the one that we will solve, 
the problem that we're checking, how did you realize in that one, the, the numbers, the statistics, and then possible solutions, how is going to be the cost on this. Sometimes it's not possible, but whenever it's possible, I guess it's a very good idea to check into that. I think, teacher, that if you use this, this technique, you need to be an expert. You need to, 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 to know uh, a lot of, of everything because you need to, to skip or to go to one topic and then another one topic behind or another one topic uh, forward and backward. <laughs> you need to be an expert. If you are uh, at the beginning of the knowledge, you, you, don't, you don't need to do something like that because you will be so confused that at the end you will not know what you are talking to. So exactly, so it's, yeah, it's depending on, as I was telling you, it's a very good technique actually, it's interesting, but yeah, you need to be careful on the way that you're gonna use it because you don't want to, to lose everybody. I mean, the conclusion at the end, they have to understand everything and they have to, to know what to do, right? So that is very important. Perfect, number seven says, add in a short video. And that is going to be for, let's see. Uh, who hasn't read? Let me see. Andres Giovanni. Not possible. Roxana Asensio. Okay. Adding a short video. Billions of hours of YouTube are consumed each month and have Advertiser have defined videos as having a high retention rate for users. However, very few presentations ever use videos to engage with the audience. Find a short video clip that reinforces your history or explains a concept better than words can. You can either embed, correct, say like that? Embed, embed. Yeah. embed. Thank you. You can either embed the video correctly into your presentation software or include a link to an external website. Just make sure your test, your metal on the day of the presentation and have a backup on a USB using case you need it. Good, what do you get on this one? Well, the, the first step is have the enough knowledge about your presentation. And after that, uh, you can, uh, as a presenter, you can uh, looking for a short video and try to support your presentation with, with one, with, with, yeah, with one. And it's important to uh, try to use that uh, type of um, tools because um, maybe you can get a better idea to explain or to present in your explanation. And the other hand, you can um, maybe get more uh, interest of the audience because uh, imagine you are uh, you are a listener and you try to read, you, you try to get more information of the topic, but the person is stuck in for hours and hours and hours, and maybe at the end of the presentation, you, you lost your interest and you, you lost your time. So, but uh, if the person who is presenting share a uh, share video, and maybe it's easier to the listener try to, to get, um, a little uh, explanation or uh, memories about the presentation. That's why it's important to 
uh, try to use that uh, type of, of, of uh, tools because uh, some, some persons try to uh, get a lot of information in, in their minds, but the other just try to get maybe some point, some, inter some interest point. And it's easier when you use, um, audiovisuales. The audiovisual yeah. content. Visual content, yeah. And well, for example, in my case, I try to, when the topic is uh, maybe, um, it's not friendly at all. Uh, I try to support some presentation with um, videos. You know, uh, when uh, we have an uh, uh, explanation about some, uh, maybe some uh, software of the company, and I don't get a lot of information because it's maybe it's, it's not friendly, you know. It's, it's um, like um, a lot of specific. Maybe you try to get your your notes and interest interest point, but at the end of the day, you always are looking for information on internet, and that's why it's important to share uh, that type of of tools. It's like um, uh, give a little, um, maybe a little explanation about the topic in a, in a video, maybe, because uh, you can, maybe you, you can give a, a presentation for hours, but it's complex when you try to get the interest of the audience. Okay, perfect. Thank you. So that is so true. I mean, this is a very good one. I mean, depending, of course, of the audience and the topic, but sometimes, I mean, if it's, for example, two hours, maybe or four hours, sometimes it's good mm -hmm. for you to stop, for you, for them to listen to other people speaking and this is a very good, a very good resource. Also, sometimes you want to impact the audience in different things, in different ways. And this is a very good tool for you to, to do that one, to, to let them know uh, what is supposed to be done or what do you need to learn or anything like that. So uh, this is a very good technique, definitely. Good, number eight invite people onto the stage. Uh, this one is going to be for Juan Miguel. Okay, just let me turn the fan off. Of course, of course. Okay, number eight, invite people onto the stage. If you're preparing a particularly long presentation, consider having other people to come on the stage and tag for a bit. This will help you narrate the story and make the whole presentation more interactive. Steve Jobs never pulled off the entire presentation by himself. He always invited several speakers, including designers, partners, and other executives to help him introduce their latest product. Of course, this technique should always be arranged with your colleagues in advance. Okay, what do you get on this one? Uh, for example, if you are in the uh, IT department, yeah, uh, or any other, uh, and you have to deliver the content of a new system, for example, or, uh, or, or a training, yeah, or a new system or new app, uh, okay, you, if you're the leader, you can, uh, you can, Present, yeah, but uh, in order to make more interactive this uh, presentation or or the or the meeting, you can invite 
uh, people who were related to to the to the job yeah for example developers uh, in order to uh, kind of explain some situation that they uh, that they faced and obviously they overcome yeah and how they overcome the situation uh, in order to uh, uh, to the to the audience or to the people in the in the public not be uh, not be only watching uh, one person just talking and talking and talking yeah uh, maybe in this case they could see two or more people and uh, yeah in order to be more interactive with with the with the audience and obviously with the with the other people in your team, yeah. In order to uh, um, take in consideration the the audience and obviously your your partners or your coworkers, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, very good, perfect. So yeah, this is similar to the other one. We were saying that sometimes uh, people they need to to listen to other people, right? So and sometimes there are experts or people that they know more about a topic. So then it's a very good idea to bring, to bring somebody one, two, depending on how long it's going to be the presentation uh, for them to speak, to share what happened or any experiences or anything like that. So that is a very good, a very good thing. So good. Next one says poll the audience. So this one is going to be for, let's see. Uh, David Samuel. Okay, polls are similar to quizzes. Uh, to surveys. Sorry? It's similar to a survey. A survey similar. like when, a survey like when they are asking about your opinion, yes, what do you yes, do? Yes. But in, in this uh, is quizzes, yes. Ah, okay, Those you're reading already. Ah, go ahead, I'm sorry. Yeah, <laughs> I, th I thought you were asking or something like that. Yeah, but polls is like a sort of, yeah, of course. Okay. Polls are similar to quizzes in that they engage the audience during the presentations. Polls encourage participants to think not only about your questions, but also about the answers. Moreover, like polls help create mental breaks so your audience can regain attention and stay focused throughout your presentation by including everyone in answering the questions, you also create a group experience that leaves the audience feelings like they all have been part of your presentation. Good, what do you get on this one? Okay, it is, it is important. I, I have saying before that if you have the people raise the hand that somebody that do some things like that and the people get involved, the people make a, a pause, uh, the people uh, uh, can uh, think in uh, specific in the, in, the, in the question you are asking or something similar. And uh, they break uh, the, the monotonous way that only one is speaking and stop and can uh, start again with the, the next topic, something like that. There are uh, um, a software that you can use in a, if you are uh, uh, doing a video conference, like uh, I don't know if you know it, it's a, a Mentimeter. It is important. You can do one, two questions and, and you can show the, the answers in a very, creative ways and uh, break the monotonous of the speech. I think it is important. Very good, perfect, thank you. Yeah, that is that is true. I mean, this kind of activities and if you present it, like you say with different tools, like the one that you mentioned, yeah, it's going to be very attractive for people because they feel that they are part of something, they are interacting, they provide feedback, and then you can continue and make your point valid, right? So. It's a very, very good thing. Nice. Next one says, use appropriate humor. So this one is going to be for 
Dora Elizabeth. Okay. Use a prepared humor. Some of the best speeches and presentation in the world feature plenty, plenty of humor. No matter the, the subject, a great speaker will use a natural charisma. 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 Humor and language to convey their points and get the crowd excited about what they are saying. A great example of building rapport with the audience through the use of humor is Barack Obama talking about the government building Iron Man. Another example is, the, is when Morgan Sport Clock offers individuals the opportunity to buy the rights to name his, his TED talk, which he refers to again as the end, where the reverence, the title. The title. The title. He papers the entire presentation with humorous commentary that non, non, nonetheless support his point. Take relevant jokes and find a way to bring out the hope humor in your subject. And you and the audience will be much more engaged, engaged and more likely to remember your words. Very good. What do you get on this one? And I think it's a, it's refer a, a, a use a maybe a good, good, good job. Okay. And good job and, and uh, uh, for uh, keep a, a, a enthusiastic a, a listener and, and keep a, a interest in the topic. Mm -hmm. Very good. So that is it. I mean, yeah, sometimes, not always, of course, and depending what kind of joke you're going to use, it's going to be a very good idea. I mean, to make people laugh, of course, that is something that is going to provide energy, right? It's going to provide something very good to the uh, to the interaction between the audience and the presenter. So, yes, one, two jokes, depending on uh, how serious is the topic or what you want to achieve, is a very good idea. That is a good technique, a good strategy for you to wake everybody up. Good. Practice your delivery again and again. Um, Giselle. Not possible. Fernando Ernesto Cosme. Okay. okay. Uh, practice your delivery again and again. Practicing is the most important part of delivering an interactive presentation. You need to practice where to use lip quizzes, when to accept questions, which points to emphasize with body language, language and many more. There are several options for practicing. In front of a mirror, great for seeing and improving your body language. However, it can be distracting to what you are saying to friends or colleagues. A useful way to get, a useful way to get feedback on your presentation, try and action the feedback straight away to improve on it. You can also give the person some key areas to focus their feedback. Um, if you believe you are you are weaker in those areas. Virtual reality. Practice in realistic public speaking environments. Whether it be in a virtual conference room or boardroom, boardroom. Receive feedback on your speech with voice analysis, anal analysis technology. Okay. okay. Uh, what do you get on this one? Uh, well, uh, I, I know, I don't know, but the, the, the other, but in my case, uh, when always I had, I had to, 
I had to uh, expose maybe a topic or in, in, in the course or, or, or subject. Uh, when you, when you, there, there are many, many ways to practice, to practice on a presentation. In this case, we have three, three, three options, but you, you, can, you can do difference if you want. Uh, it's, it's very, for me, uh, it's, it's, I used to, to practice, uh, maybe repeat and repeat the presentation uh, for me, only for me, not, not in front of a mirror, but only for me. Because uh, I, I, when you are uh, listening your your own voice uh, in a presentation, sometimes you maybe can uh, detect maybe some wrong phrases, or you you can you can say uh, that 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 not sound good. And it's very it's very important to practice because uh, yes, you you maybe you handle the topic, but when you are in front of a, in a uh, maybe a lot of people, or maybe from a. It, it depends your your attitude and how to you involved in a in that environment. Uh, the, the practice uh, when you are practicing when you are in front of uh, maybe your memory. Uh, you are maybe more more secure or more safety to the when you are talking about in front because you you practice that presentation. If you don't practice, uh, maybe in, in middle of the practice you can get nervous, or you can get wrong some phrases, or maybe you I don't know. It's, I, I I have seen some cases when the, the, maybe some teammates uh, uh, had trust in in, a, in in the middle of the presentation because maybe they didn't practice. So it's very important. Okay, very good, perfect, thank you. So definitely this is something that we need to do. Even if you have the experience, if you are going to provide a presentation of a, a new topic or uh, for a totally different audience, it's a very good idea to practice, right? So um, there, there are different, I mean, strategies here, for example, in front of a mirror, yeah, you can do it like that. So you can see yourself the way that everybody's going to look at you. Uh, to friends or colleagues, uh, of course, you need to choose carefully who's going to be there so they can provide you a, a feedback that is valuable for you. Virtual reality is one of the newest. I mean, there are some uh, tools online that you can go and speak uh, and they simulate that you are in public. And at the end, they provide you with a feedback. I mean, if you were secure, if the pronunciation was good, uh, you can set timing and you... And they will tell you if you, your timing was good enough. So it's a very good thing. So very nice. Okay. Uh, so number 12, Heidi. Sure, teacher. Try and relate to the audience. Make comparisons to events from every day that most people are more than familiar with. By making things look simple, not only will you help your audience get better understanding of what the subject by enabling them to visualize the information more clearly, you will also draw a connection between you. After all, you are all just regular people with similar experience. You just happen to be performing different roles at the moment. Very good. So what do you get on this one? For me, is to try to speak in the same language. Maybe, maybe the the, um, the audience uh, is is about to learn something new, but they, you can try to to make to use your uh, universal language, universal experience that can help better understanding about the topic. Okay, very good. So yes, sometimes it's a very good idea to. Well, when you don't know exactly uh, what audience you're going to have, you know that there will be people there. When they introduce themselves and, and they say, for example, about hobbies or what they want, then you get to understand what kind of people is the one that you have there. And then it's going to be easier to get connected with them. So that is a very unique thing as, as well to, to move on with this one, right? 
Good, nice. Uh, number 13, strong body language, position, posture, and gesture. Okay, uh, Jessica Janari. Not possible, okay, let's see. Ana Claudia. Okay, strong body language, position, posture, and gesture. Non-verbal communication plays a large part in how we construct meaning. So it makes sense to consider how to use it in your presentation. You can make things more interesting for your audience by using your body language to enhance what you're saying. Body language goes beyond reinforcing your messaging. It's useful from a biological standpoint as discussed in her body language TED talk. Emmy Cody's research found that using assertive body language released testosterone and reduced cortisol in both men and women. There be increasing confidence and decreasing stress. An effective presenter pays close attention to the physical relationship with he or his audience. If you stand hiding behind an overhead projector or stand too far away from your audience, they will not develop a bond with you and this will limit the effectiveness of your presentation. Good, what did you get on this one? Uh, yes, I agree totally with that because the body language can be uh, on your, can be uh, used on your favor, can we say it in that way? Okay. Or can uh, play on the opposite way. Because sometimes uh, people, they, uh, I've seen people that they move, even though they are stand up, they move too much their legs or one feet. And all the whole, the, the, the whole audience attention goes specifically to that. And nobody's paying attention to what they do, but on, or what they say or what they are explaining. But on the other hand, also the body language is used to, in the positive way, uh, and helps to communicate or emphasize uh, what you want to emphasize. For example, uh, open up your arms uh, if you are showing or saying that something is big or maybe just making gesture with fingers. I don't know, things that helps a lot. They can work, uh, the body language, uh, it works in a positive or negative way. Very, very good. So that is true. So yes, it's going to be very important for the people that are, is there. People are sitting there in front of you. And then if you are mm -hmm. talking and you are moving your your hands mm -hmm. and the way that you speak and the way that you move through uh, there on the room. So many things are going to be important. Uh, and uh, yeah, if we're, for example, in the other hand, if we have the hands on the pockets or uh, if we feel like nervous they are going to notice that one so uh, it's going to cause an impact this is one of the most important things that some people look at when they are interviewing people for a new position so mm -hmm. it's something that yeah we can practice we can practice we can check how we can develop ourselves in a presentation and meeting so everything goes well with your body language Exactly. And they put us an example, example, the, the, the test talk <laughs> It's so funny because I was telling you that it seems like they use like a standard for their presentation. So everybody is, I don't know, I guess they use a standard, something like that. Yeah, definitely. So they are so professional that they mm -hmm. know um, what is going to happen, how it's going to happen. Everything goes very well in those presentations. Mm -hmm. right? That's right. Good. Perfect. Thank you. Let's okay. move on to the other one, the second part of this one. Says, uh, let's see, this is going to be for. Okay. okay, go ahead, please. Okay. Your posture will also dictate levels of audience involvement. 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 Sorry. Involvement. Mm -hmm. Sorry? Involvement. involvement. Ah, okay. Okay. I start again. Your posture, your posture will also dictate levels of audience involvement. If you, if you are too relaxed and sit slumping in a chair to deliver your talk, 
the audience might drift away. Find a comfortable but purposeful position in relation to your audience and adopt an upright sitting or a standing posture that allows for movement and gesture. Uh, audience respond well to the physical energy and enthusiasm being conveyed by a presenter. And thus, the use of clear and a controlled gesture will greatly enhance your presentation. Gestures that are open and reach out to your audience serve to extend your presentation to them and thus help them feel more involved. Example of good body language. Use hand gesture when delivering key points. Use call delivery movement when highlighting certain information. Keep arms and let uncross and let uncross uncross. Okay. Uncross. So what do you get on this one? Uh, I understand that um, the the posture when you are a presenter, it's a critical point for for get a message to the, your to your audience because uh, sometimes when people present it and they have they feel shy so they they use the, the their or oh, they pop your their hands and their pockets and they see the, the floor and something like this so that posture transmit to the audience so shine fear and people maybe people cannot put attention to your message so it's important a uh, good posture uh, use your hand in a correct way uh, stay calm and like the the last line saying keep arms and legs on cross because it's very common when people are uncomfortable in the, when they present it, they cross the, the, their arms or they sit in and close their, their hand, their legs, sorry, their legs. So uh, I think that if you, if you have transmitted a, a clearly and positive message, uh, you need you need to worry in your in your posture because not not all the people can can present it in a good way because we are different and some people had more more um I mean, a skill more skill to that to do that and other people maybe we don't have so i think that is your your plan is to be a presenter uh, you need to prepare your pre prepare not only the, the presentation the, the content of the presentation uh, even oh, sin también of oh, course also, how? also, also uh, you need to prepare um, your personal presentation and your your posture is part of your personal presentation, I think. Perfect. That is so true. Yeah, definitely. So, uh, yeah, you need to be confident, right? I believe the body language is linked a lot of being confident, to be in front of people, speaking. Uh, when you feel that you are really transmitting a very good message and that everything that you are saying is, I mean, if you are an expert on that one, definitely something, uh, everything is going to be good. So, and that is going to, to be transmitted also with the body language. So the opposite also happens as uh, Ana Claudia was saying, uh, if you are nervous, if you don't know what you're saying, if you, you don't know the data that you are presenting, of course, you are going to be nervous and is going to be presented also on the body language so definitely this is something to consider okay uh, number 14 minding eye contact with all sections of the audience um jarvin isaac
Okay, teacher. Number 14, maintain a contact with all sections of the audience. Making a contact is one of the most powerful technique for involve your audience. If used well, ace contact can serve to make your address much more person as more efficient. If a contact is avoided, the presenter can appear to be nervous and unconvincing. It is important to share a contact with all members of a small audience or all section of a all large audience. Avoid making a contact with use the people you know, taking particular care not to deliver your entire presentation to the person who assists in your work. Remember that you will need to involve the whole audience if you are to make the physical presentation. If you are nervous, a contact can be difficult to establish and maintain. Remember that some A contacts is better than none and that should try to build your confidence over time. Good, what do you get on this one? Good, what do you get on this one? Uh, the A contacts, as the, the paragraph says, is so important when you are making a presentation because you can show that you are prepared for do that. And you, baby, you, when you are making a presentation, you can't be only reading your presentation because you're, I don't know who says in English, I don't remember the, the, the word is to gestures. 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 Your gestures is so important. It is, it, to a contact with all the audience is so important to, to be confident with them. Okay, very good. So yeah, definitely this is this okay, is very, very important. So yeah, this is like when you are talking with somebody, I mean, with one person with five people, uh, then eye contact is a very good thing. So everybody's going to link with you, you will be connected and you are going to show how confident you are. So this is something that we we need to do. So, and this is a good tip. I mean, if you are with a short audience, then you have eye contact with everybody. Not only one, two, three, but everybody. And if it's a large audience, then you can uh, have eye contact with different sectors of the audience. So that is a very good thing. So number 15, use live quizzes to better understand your audience. Okay, that is going to be for Andres Giovanni. Not possible. Marcus. Okay. Um, use live quiz to better understand your audience. Uh, live quizzes are a great way to understand your audience better get them engaging with the material. For example, if you're giving a presentation on autonomous vehicles, vehicles, uh -huh. you could ask questions such as, when do you think autonomous vehicles will become <clears throat> mainstream? Are you concerned by safety issues? If someone is injured or killed by the car, who is to, who is to blame? This will surely create some interesting results which you as a presenter can talk about and discuss. Okay, what do you get on this one? Um, and and that, I understand that um, live quizzes, like um, um, asking the people why someone is making a presentation <clears throat> can engage the people to the material and so they will they can they will they will be more um they will be paying attention about the material because uh, the presenter is constantly asking some interesting questions to, to keep active the all the the audience so it's important to perhaps um before the the presentation and um, 
have some questions to during the, the presentation, make that question. Very good. So yes, I mean, this is very important. And uh, well, it's not just uh, to ask questions. I mean, sometimes you can do a little bit more like to analyze, what do you think about this? What do you think is going to be the future of this? Or what do you think will be the impact of this in your life? So, and that is going to personalize uh, the questions and also the topics so they can bring to your attention certain things. Sometimes even it's going to help you. I mean, sometimes this is something that is very important that you as a presenter, you didn't consider, but then whenever they bring this, uh, you realize that uh, the, the connection, the uh, understanding uh, and the message is, is a very good thing because then you realize that everything is working even better than you thought it was going to be. So very good. So use physical props is possible. This is something that we checked on the video as well. Do you remember? So let's check into that one. This is going to be for uh, Irwin Lagos. Not possible. Okay. Oh, yes, teacher. Yes, teacher. Sorry. Okay. Sorry. Go, go ahead. <laughs> okay. Use physical props if possible. If you don't need to give him a, a product, they want to use props during your presentation. Props are great, but help the audience visual picture that you are talking about. While talking through your presentation, can you can refer to the prop at certain points of highlight your point or make the clear it clear to the audience. Can you know it? Does it will the T E B folk and um, are the same? No, he referred to the slope of yes and chart of no. Naturally, they pick up a slope as well as a child from the table and help demonstrate his point. Another great example is will Jill Bogle Taylor brings a real human. Brand the stage during the, the, her tell, tell, talk to explain to what happened to her when had a stroke and touched the audience with the demonstration and left the audience in complete away. In complete away. Our. Our. Our, yes. Okay. So, what um, did you understand on this one? Let me see, teacher, a moment. I don't understand something. For example, if you have a, a product, you can use it, the real product. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the real product. And the and the uh, you will have a, the use line plus video and for to all the people can see, you can use you can use the demonstration. And marketing is like a demo, yeah, like demo. But if you have a, you have a car, you can remember. I don't, I don't, I don't know who is Kenny Nagel. I don't know who is and will they tell? I don't know who is. But I know that Tesla, when when you use your car, they you can saw you can see this this car new, yeah, yeah, the new car, yeah. You can see this. It has been, this is, for me. It's more easy. That's that's extra. That's uh, does it the use physical props if possible? Yeah, but if possible, no, all the time, but you can demonstration your product. Okay, teacher. Very good. So that is it. I mean, sometimes for you to make a point, for you to show, uh, sometimes it's a very good idea to to use props like physical things or demonstrations or something. So that is going to be impacted. So. I haven't seen these two videos. Uh, maybe I'm going to take the time to check. If it's not that long, maybe we're going to watch it because uh, this, uh, what it says here, uh, I mean, it's something very interesting. So maybe we're going to consider to watch it uh, here in the class and let's see how it goes. But props, I mean, physical things for you to demonstrate things, steps or procedures, that is something that definitely is going to help you, the audience, understand better some situations okay number 17 
extend your usual vocal range. So that one is going to be for, uh, let's see, Roxana. Okay, let me see. Extend your usual vocal range. Your tone of voice, your volume, and other vocal aspects affect how people listen and hear your message. Julian Teshers TED talk on how to speak that per, to that people want to listen, want to listen is all about this. And at the, at the end offers several tips in our toolbox for how to master super chiquita las letras. Yeah, sometimes it's depending if you're on the cell phone, yeah, it's going to be. Yes, I'm in the cell phone. Sorry. Um, but you can mm -hmm. you can use your fingers to increase that one. Yes. I do that. Julian Tesher said talk in how to speak to how to speak so that person want to listen is all about this. And at the end offer several tips in our toolbox for how to master the use of voice for changing your speaking pace. Yep. Speaking pace. Okay, speaking pace to speaking in a different pitch. Get feedback from a friend or college. Colleague. Or colleague. Mm -hmm. colleague. Colleague or college? No, coll colleague. Colleague. Okay, or colleague to see what works best for you. Good. So, what do you get on this one? Well, uh, it's important. Uh, the um, maybe uh, the sounds, yeah, the some ton of voice because uh, I imagine that paragraph is was is according to uh, maybe um say when someone is um talking about uh some topic uh, I, and that person who is talking uh, have the enough knowledge about so about that topic maybe that person can talk with uh, authority maybe we safer than the others and that's why they could um, talk with a strong voice and it's important when someone is talking in that way, because if you hear that presenter is speaking um, slowly or um, maybe with a lot of uh, do that doubts, right? Doubts, yeah. Doubts. Uh, maybe you, as a listener, you will loves your interest in that presentation and on the other hand um, imagine if as a listener you are paying for learn more in a presentation uh, at least you are waiting that that person has the enough the enough has has sorry had the enough knowledge and maybe it's important when uh, the presenter is uh, using a strong voice and had the knowledge and maybe, uh, well, the last, the previous class, we was talking about that it's important to use the correct words. And that's made a difference when you are presenting something. And that's the different too. Also when uh, the listener are maybe boring or something like that if you change the message and use the different uh, words or the correct words you can get more interesting of the audience okay yeah that is very true i mean 
This is very, very important. It's one of the most important things. It's so important, such as us, as the content and also as the body language. So, and uh, you know, I, I was thinking whenever you were reading this, I was thinking that this is something that a lot of people use. I mean, for example, uh, everybody, we have been uh, on a bus, right? And a salesperson comes to the, into the bus and they start talking about convincing you for a product. I mean, this is going to be a very nice candy. This is very good, very tasty, but they use this technique. I mean, they, mm -hmm. they have like a, a tone of voice. They go up, they go down. Um, another, another people that use this a lot are like the, uh, the people at the church, the people that speak in front of the church, they speak and they yell and they try to transmit energy. I mean, and everybody feels like, oh yes, this is true, right? Because of the tone of voice that they use. So this, it's a very good thing. Of course, you're not going to scream. You're not going to shout it out loud. But, I mean, the way that you are going to go up and go down, the way that the intonation, the pronunciation of the words, uh, together with the body language, together with the confidence and eye contact and the manage of the topic, if it's well structured through the presentation, is going to make this a master, a master presentation. So it's one of the most important things, definitely. Good, last one says use language and literary techniques. Uh, this one is going to be for, let me check. Uh, who has not read at least once? Everybody, right? Jessica Janari. Not possible. Let's see. Giselle. Okay. David Samuel. Okay. Use language and literary techniques. Your use of language has a huge influence on the way you engage your audience. It's important to use the language your audience understands and is familiar with. Avoid using language that is too formal or informal, too technical or too simplistic, depending upon the nature of your talk and the knowledge base of your audience. Pitching your presentation at the right level can be a challenge, but it's very effective for making the audience feel involved. There are various library, literary techniques you can use, such as the power of three, to give greater impact to your message. Okay, what do you get on this one? Okay, that, that is important to know what is the literary techniques. I think that is important, but uh, uh, the, we need to, to know the, and the audience. The, the main point when you speak is to know the audience, what are you speaking to? Because that gives you the, uh, I speak sometimes, for example, to to doctors, and I need to adduce the, the, the language to uh, uh, this kind of people. Sometimes I was invited to, to give a speech, and when I, I was in front of the of the of the guy, it was kids, <laughs> it was kids, it was a, a big challenge because I need to change everything. I need to start with a with a little story. And then the kids only only hear you about ten minutes. Then you lose it. And that, that is important. You you need to talk. If you are talking to to women, only women. You you need to or women. Sorry, you need to to think. You need to to engage with your body language. That that kind of people is important. And uh, you need to, to use your, uh, the, the, the rule that I know for speaking is that you need to speak at the, uh, at the level of the, of the, the, the people that with um, fewer knowledge can understand you. People that, uh, if there are people that are, uh, uh, professionals, but there are people that know you need to speak in the way that the, the 
the most of the people understand you and do, you need to use a, a standard language, not a, uh, like in Spanish, we have uh, several words that are difficult to understand. And you need to speak like that. I, I remember I was speaking with a, a, a guys from, from, from Chile, Chilean guys, and, and I, I say, I have two, dos hipotas, hipotas. What is the meaning of that? What, is, what do you say? There is a, a, a word specific for, for us, for Salvadorian. We need to, to take care of that. Very good. Actually, that is uh, literary techniques means that you are going to mirror your audience, right? So, yeah, sometimes uh, you, depending on who is your audience, you're going to speak very technical or very general, very standard, very simplistic. So uh, that is very, very important. It's something that we discussed before, but it's good to consider again and uh, use all these techniques the way that we need. So, uh, for first of all, do you have any questions before we finish? Yes, you, you will share this link. Of course. I, I want to know what is this environment that you can practice in, in a, a virtual audience. Ah, very well. Yeah, you are going to find the links <laughs> inside of that one. And uh, yes. yeah, you know, there are many interesting things that we we can learn, right? So it's, it's a very nice thing. So also... Um, I will be checking on some videos here to see which one can we watch because it mentioned a lot of videos. And uh, well, the important thing of this one is that, uh, of course, we are different people. I mean, meaning that, of course, for some people, it's kind of natural to go and speak in front of people, right? It's like, yeah, you know, this is this, like this, and the other thing. But some, for some other people, it's more difficult. So these techniques are good for you to identify what you can improve. And then if you practice and if you take that in consideration, you will become a very good, a very good presenter. So very nice. Okay, my friends, I'm going to check the attendance because it's time to go and sleep. And here we go. Ana Claudia Gonzalez Velasquez. Present teacher. Good. Andres Giovanni Valdivieso Portillo. Present. Good. David Samuel Galdames Monterosa. Present teacher. Good. Dora Elizabeth Flores Mendez. Present. Good. Fernando Ernesto Cosme Morales. Present. Good. Fernando Marvin Gonzalez Martinez. Present. Good. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejía. Present teacher. Good. Heidi Eugenia Salguero de Rivas. Present teacher. Good. Ileana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Jarvin Isaac Guevara Miranda. Isaac Guevara Miranda. Present teacher. Good. Jose Marcos Rodriguez Ayala. Present. Good. Jose Osmin Rivas Navas. For Jose Osmin is the 101 of today. Jose Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Juan Miguel Bran Mejia. Present teacher. Good. Ramon Enrique Mata Escobar. Roberto Luis Umaña Orellana. Roxana Yvette Asensio de Mejia. Present. Good. William Alexander Ramirez Flores. Present. Good. Jessica Janari Cortez Diaz. Here. Good. Zuleima Yvonne Moreno de Hernandez. Present. Good. And Erwin Lagos Andrade. Present teacher. Perfect. So my friends, it was a pleasure to be back with you again. See you tomorrow and dream in English. Okay. Good night. 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 Thank you, teacher. Good night. Good night. Good night.
Hello, do you have any questions or I can help you with anything here? Hello. So do you have questions or would you, would you like to practice a little bit? Hello, do you have questions or anything? Hello, Giselle. 